Coming up, multi-best-selling author and my good friend John Gordon, Mr. Positivity, stops by as we take on an issue, this show that is affecting all of us. It's stress. Here we go. We're going to break it down. Helping you grow personally so that you can advance professionally. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Thrilled to have you with us. All right, let's talk about stress. Uh, there are a whole lot more effective ways to manage stress than the way we Americans manage it. We're going to do a deep dive on that today because the data is unbelievable. It's crazy uh, about stress. And so I've got a lot of data here, and then we're going to talk about what do we do about the stress issue. And we're going to look at stress from two ways, professional and personal, because you can't just say it's all personal related. You can't just say it's all professional related. Uh, so we're going to dive in here. All right, let's 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 start with where we stand. According to the World Health Organization, 63% of U.S. workers, and that will be our focus, is the United States here, uh, 63% of U.S. workers are ready to quit their job to avoid work-related stress. And I, I think we forget that stress that is generated in the office follows us everywhere we go. And the data, um, it, it, it's really, really grim. Now, we're going to get to in just a moment three areas, body, mood, and behavior. But I want to paint the picture here. I'm going to do a deep dive uh, in this, this article here on, on stress in America. Top sources of stress. Not all of these are work-related. Top sources of stress. The rise of prices. So we've heard about the inflation game. Inflation's been going on. You can look at the day-in, day-out stuff on inflation, but the bottom line is gas, groceries, utilities, rent. You start looking at the things that affect us every day. They've gone up, and they've stayed up. By the way... Even when inflation abates a little bit, the prices are still there. It's just the rate at which they grow slows, right? So the watermark is higher. Global uncertainty, another major cause of stress. You think of things like Russia invading Ukraine. You look at the Mideast situation between Palestine and Israel. It's a war, okay? These type of things, because of the incessant headlines and we have so much news at our disposal i mean we have it on our phones we have it on our computers it's scrolling on tv it's the scroll of doom and gloom makes a lot of sense the stress level experienced by americans is 26 excuse me 20 percentage points higher than the global average so you take the, every other country all the countries of the world you take their stress you average it and then you take the United States, and the United States is 20% higher as it relates to stress. 55% of Americans are stressed during the day. Stress causes 57% of U.S. respondents to feel paralyzed, stuck. I got news for you. If you're stressed to the point of not being able to decide, if you're stressed to the point of not being able to do, can I tell you that being stuck or paralyzed creates more stress? It's just like a hamster wheel. 63% of U.S. workers are ready to quit their job to avoid work-related stress. By the way, that change of quitting a job, very stressful. Are you starting to catch the pattern here? Stress gives birth to more stress. Stress is like New York rats, constantly breeding. More rats. The more stressed I am, the more stressed I will become if I do not take action. Chronic stress is commonplace at work with 94% of workers feeling stress at work. Now, quick little aside here. I see this piece of data, and this is for some of you who what you consider stress, something that harms you, it's actually something that can help you. This is a quick aside. 
When you see a number like this, 94% of workers report feeling stress at work. Well, it ought to be 100%. 100% of you should feel some level of stress at work. Not all stress is bad stress. Okay? You ever heard of things like the stress test that they will do, engineers will do, to make sure that a bridge or uh, that a structure... Listen, there is good stress and bad stress. And when I see a number like 94% of Americans experience stress at work it's like good grief snowflake yeah you ought to feel some stress i gotta go work out tonight if i don't feel any stress on my muscles at my workout tonight guess what i've wasted my time in other words giving effort has a level of positive stress right i am focused moving active proactive, engaged. It's going to stress me a little bit. Why? Because I am giving effort. So just a quick aside, we've got to a point now where we have raised generations of people who are now workers. And I've talked about this helicopter parenting and we've created snowflakes. And these are people, quite frankly, not everybody, but they just can't handle any stress. There's a difference between good stress and bad stress. In other words, the first time your kid has to give a speech in front of his classmates, he's going to be stressed out. She's going to be stressed out. Can I just tell you something? That's good for them. They got to learn how to handle that. That's good stress. There's a difference. It's called performance. You got to do it. You'll be fine. All right. 35% 35% of workers say they're boss. Now we're getting into the work causes. Because we've been talking about living conditions, the political climate, financial insecurity as it relates to debt. 35% of workers say their boss is the cause of their workplace stress. We go further. 80% of U.S. workers experience work stress because of ineffective company communications. I got news for you. That's because your boss. Your boss is accountable for that. 39% of American employees report their workload is the main source of their work stress. I got news for you. That's your boss. 49% of 18, 24-year-olds felt comparing themselves to others is a stressor. That's social media, comparison. So a lot of reasons for stress. Now let's just go back to where we're at. What is the impact of stress? Well, there's stress on your body. Think of headaches, muscle pain, chest pain, fatigue, can't sleep. Maybe your stomach's jacked up and all of that. We know from data that stress itself weakens your immune system So all of a sudden, you're not as healthy because you can't fight sickness. Stress affects your mood. Come on. Anxiety, restlessness, lack of focus, lack of motivation. Can't even do anything because you're so stressed out, stuck in worry. You have memory problems, feeling overwhelmed, grumpy, depression. And then the impact of stress, it affects our behavior. Not just our mood. That leads to now we're going to overeat. Come on. I'm an overeater. I'm stressed. Watch out. Chips and salsa on the way. Pasta. Bread. I'm in. Okay? Undereating. Loss of appetite. You don't eat. Angry outbursts. Isolating yourself from family, from friends. Becoming sedentary. These are all effects of stress. So understanding what is stressing people out. So let's just bucket them for you. Let's talk about finances, credit card debt, all-time high, student loan debt in the trillions of dollars. So finances, ability to be able to take care of yourself, work, overwork, bad communication, don't know what expectations are, feel like I'm getting overlooked. I can go on and on and on. Personal, raising kids, hello, that's stressful. Teenagers, good grief. World, world news. We look at news all the time. The news stresses us out. What do we do? We keep watching more of it. These are all causes of stress. And understanding this at a very simple level, and I didn't tell you anything that you didn't know today, but I'm calling out that you have got to be really intentional, proactive to say, what are those areas? I look at those areas. Where am I stressed? Are all of those trigger points for me for stress? If they are, what do I do about it? 
So we're going to talk about that next. There's a simple little hack that can literally change the way stress comes and goes and can change your life. I'm telling you, it's the most simple hack there is and it works. More on that coming up. Hey folks, I want to tell you about one of our viewers, Nick. He was a high school chemistry teacher, not making enough for his wife to stay home with their kids like they wanted, and he needed a change. A friend told him about a tech job, and a few days later, Nick also heard about Bethel Tech and their full-stack development program on this show. So he enrolled. He got in, he crushed it, he got hired before he even finished, and now, ready for this, makes $20,000 more with opportunities to make up to $150,000. So... What does your life look like a year from now if you were to move into tech? Will you bet on yourself like Nick did? For as little as $5,000 in just 15 weeks of your time, you can learn a skill that will land you a great job in tech. And remember, Ken Coleman viewers get a 10% discount. To find out more, go to BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. All right, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Thrilled to have you with us. Okay, we're taking on stress. So, your first segment, quick review. The causes, the sources of stress. And we all are going to deal with those causes differently. And at different seasons of our life, they're going to affect us differently. But there there is an actual way to take control. If I told you that I could give you a pill, and it would control how much stress affects you. In other words... It would keep stress at bay. And I said, it's a pill and it has no side effects. How many of you would take it? I dare say most of you. So I think there is. And uh, this is not anecdotal. There's actually research to back this up. All right. Uh, And my good friend, John Gordon, who is Mr. Positivity, because he's one of the most negative people uh, on the planet. His words, not mine. And he kind of had a, 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 a watershed moment, a lightning bolt moment where his life was really negative, almost lost his wife. And he decided, you know what, I'm going to have to change my perspective. I look at the world through this really negative lens and I just need to rip the Band-Aid off and change the way I look at the world. And he did. And he's gone on to have an unbelievable career, you know, sold probably, I don't know, 20 million books and counting. It's crazy. Mr. Positivity. Great dude. So had him into the show. And we're just going to show you about a minute clip of our conversation. And and, and then I'm going to share with you uh, some thoughts on this. Um, and, and then we're going to close the show out in our next segment with a very specific, two specific challenges uh, that will allow you to develop this tool, this, think of it as an anecdote, right? We come to the world, like, can you be vaccinated from stress? And I think the answer is yes. More on that in a minute, but here's what John Gordon had to say. Let's roll it. You know what I did to become more positive? I took walks of gratitude every day. Yeah. I wasn't a religious person or a spiritual person. Yeah, this is all before you even... I would take walks every day and I practiced gratitude because I read, you can't be stressed and thankful at the same time. And by the way, it's true. It is true. Feeling grateful, can't be stressed. What was I doing? I was tuning the antenna, which your brain is an antenna, every day to the positive instead of the negative. Instead of the negative thoughts that bring about fear, worry, anxiety, and clutter in a low state of mind, I was filling my mind and my brain with positive thoughts that uplift, that encourage, that make you feel great. So every day I'm taking this walk, those walks of gratitude turn into walks of prayer. So as I'm praying, what am I doing? I'm receiving the spirit of God. So I'm walking going, I trust in you, God. God, I know you have a plan for my life. God, I accept your purpose and your plan for me. What am I doing? I'm receiving. Yeah. In that I'm surrendering, yeah. trusting, and receiving the spirit, which is now moving through me and now healing me yeah. and renewing me. So what happens is you renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your soul. Yeah. That then starts to heal your brain. It does. Great stuff from John Gordon. So just pulling something out. You can't be stressed and grateful at the same time. Is this true? What do you think? 
In other words, can I be worried about something specific? You pick it. Can I be in the moment focusing on this negative reality or a potential negative result? Can I be focused on that and also have a gratitude thought simultaneously? So let's just walk through that. Can you do it? I challenge you right now. I challenge you. By the way, I said I would give you two challenges next segment, uh, and, and I'm going to. The challenges are how you can begin to really develop your gratitude muscle. But uh, just for sake of exercise, try having, a, by focusing on something you're grateful for, thankful for, while also focusing on something negative, something that would worry you. It's impossible to do. The brain is special. It's impossible to do. So how many of you think that your brain triggers chemical responses in your body? If you believe that to be true, then being intentional to say, when I have a thought that stresses me out. Now, this is, you, you've got to handle what you got to handle. But, but, but you're dealing with reality and you react, you're proactive, you do what you got to do. But, but when you begin to now soak on something and, and a situation, a reality stressing you out, and you begin to feel that stress, everybody knows what that feels like. You can't focus on that if you begin to say, I'm going to focus on what I'm grateful for. So there's a million suggestions out there on how we deal with stress, right? Journaling, breathing, go exercise, all true, all good. But if you think about how intense your world is, think about your personal life and your professional life, all the responsibilities you have between the time you get up and the time you go to bed. It's crazy stuff happening all the time. Job's crazy, family situation crazy. And you need a shield. I'm watching this show right now called The Last Kingdom. I'm watching it through a second time because I'm obsessed with historical period pieces. And this is uh, this is essentially medieval times and so it's swords and shields and they've got this uh this this tradition in the show i assume this is historically correct it may not be but for example purposes uh when it's time to fight the leader goes shield wall he yells out shield wall and so what they do is they all kind of come together and and they say well, they get together, shield wall, they all go, shield wall, back to the guy, right? And they all get together, and they, the guys in the front crouch, the guys behind them lean over the top of them, and they stack shields on shields, and it's a shield wall. And so the, the shield wall is the protection from arrows from the initial charge. And I think gratitude is our shield wall against stress. That's what I believe. Because I think this is the guaranteed way to beat stress, to block it out. And science backs it up. So when I begin to get stressed out about something, and by the way, I'm putting this to practice. I had a situation happen this morning. I kid you not. Stressed me out. You know what I did? Because I've been prepared for this, I kid you not. I wrote down five or six things that I was grateful for today. And I'm going to tell you, it really helped me. I mean, th this is this is doable. And, and and yet, most of us, what do we do? We eat. I do. Maybe you drink a little too much. Don't get me started on all the drug use out there. America is more drugged up than we've ever been before. Painkillers. Trying to kill a different kind of pain. It's not the pain in your knees, the pain in your heart. Pain in your head. What do we do? We try to medicate. We try to medicate with stuff that's not good for us. You know, all you healthies out there, you health foodies, you nut, you nut, health nuts, you guys are always talking about, oh, I'll put something natural in your body. Well, gratitude is a natural medicine. It's absolutely true. All the positive psychology research that I've done and studied on this stuff, it's absolutely true. John's right. You cannot be stressed over a thought and grateful at the same time. 
So the natural medicine is to realize I am stressed out right now and I need to switch my focus and I get to control this. Is it going to be difficult? Yeah. I'm going to admit to you, it's really hard to do this at times because what you want to do is soak in all the negative. But your brain is an unbelievable machine. And if you switch your brain off of what the thing is that's causing you stress and worry, and you focus on something that you're really grateful for, so no matter how bad something's going on, I got something good in my life that I can be grateful for, and I begin to focus on that, here's what happens. Your physiological makeup changes. The chemicals that... that are being released, change. And it gives you grit to keep going. And oddly enough, the natural medicine is gratitude. And you develop that muscle of gratitude of, I know how to do it. I know how to go to it. I know how to use it. And it gives us grit. It's gratitude that gives us grit to stay the course and keep going. So I want to challenge you. Something very practical. And I couldn't just do one thing, so I've got two specific challenges that I want you to try in the next 30 days and just actively work through these exercises. I'm going to unpack it next, and I'm going to tell you a story of how I used one of these things, and it'll, it'll change you because it changed me. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Okay, we're talking now about gratitude as the ultimate medicine, the natural medicine, organic medicine. (laughs) No vaccine needed here. Uh, It's just waiting for you. You don't need the jab. You just need a little time to focus. Hey, before we get to two challenges for you that are going to develop your your gratitude muscle and develop your grit, it's going to really help you relieve stress. Uh, first, if you're enjoying the program, would you help us by spreading the word? You can do that via YouTube. If you're watching a video, give us a thumbs up there uh, underneath the video. Subscribe to the channel and share. And then on podcast, well, we'd be grateful if you gave us a follow and a five-star review. And uh, don't forget the uh, the signature tool. It's just continuing to fly. And it's digital, so you don't even have to worry about shipping. All you got to do is a couple of clicks and you get the Get Clear Assessment. It measures what you do best. It measures what you enjoy doing most. And it measures what motivates you the most. If you could use what you do best to do something you love, to produce results that matter to you, I can tell you something. Watch your meaning go up and watch the amount of money that you make go up as well. You can get it at KenColeman.com slash assessment, KenColeman.com slash assessment. Okay, two challenges. So our last segment, John Gordon challenged us. And shared something that he did in his gratitude walks. He challenged us with a thought that he's absolutely right. Science backs him up. The data is un- overwhelmingly clear that you cannot be worried or stressed and grateful at the same time. You can say, oh, well, I'm grateful, but I'm stressed out of my mind. No, no, no. My point is you cannot have a thought of worry and a thought of gratitude at the same time. Can't do it. And and so we want to talk about some challenge here. So I thought thought to myself, okay, I want to challenge the audience to do two things. And I'm going to do it alongside of you. And I think it's a 30-day challenge. We're not going to make a big deal out of it. I, for those of you that are listening watching, uh, I want you to try this, and you can do your own version. But I'm going to give you some specific recommendations. If you want to edit them, that's fine too. So two things. One, I want you to have a moment some stolen moments early in the morning to start. You could do it throughout the day. It's fine. But I want you to start your day. However you start it, I want you to put in a few moments where you begin to write out or talk to yourself. And I mean this. I think the act of getting it out of your head, writing it down, or saying it to yourself is powerful. And I want you to do it at the start of your day. I want you to have a daily gratitude moment. Now, for me, this looks like, hey, I'm talking to God, and I'm saying, hey, I'm grateful for another day. I hope I get a full day, but I'm grateful that I woke up. I don't know about you all. Some of you probably aren't grateful to wake up. You feel so crappy. I feel bad for you, but I always enjoy waking up. I don't know about you. I really do. 
And so I'm grateful for this day. Second, I'm grateful for my faith. I'm grateful for a, for a home in heaven, eternal life. I'm just telling you, this is my game. All right? And you can do your game. But that's what I do. And then I'm grateful for Stacy, and I'm grateful for the kids. I'm grateful that I get to do something that I really enjoy. I'm grateful for the life it has afforded me. And I go through a list of about three or four other things, all right? And in that moment, I am focused on the good in my life. It's a great way to start, okay? Some of you would rather write that down, not say it out loud. That's fine. Some of you would rather say it out loud. Maybe it's a form of a prayer. For me, it's not something that I write down. It's the same thing every morning, and I'm talking to God. And I'm just saying, hey, I'm grateful. And it's a huge, huge way to start the day. Massive. Because what we don't realize is, is that that ritual is not just a ritual. It is your brain and your heart connecting early, getting on the same page, syncing up, and now saying, we're all focused on the same deal here. Things that I am truly thankful for. Great way to start your day. Body chemicals change. You're just kind of in a good moment. And and, and I'll tell you this. Here's what I found. When I do that, and I'll have something frustrating or something crappy happen in my day, it's amazing how right in those first few moments after the crappy or the sucky or the frustrating happened, I kind of go back to early in my day and I go, well, it's worse for somebody else somewhere. And it's a great way of saying it. Some of you are going, there's no way. I'm telling you. You can always find somebody who's got it worse than you. <laughs> I mean, you really can't. I think, unless you're dead, but you're not thinking about that anyway. So that's one exercise. Challenge one, I want you to do this every day. Write it down or say it to yourself so that we get it out of here and we hear it or we see what we're grateful for. By the way, just personal personal experience, after you do this, you won't believe how much it goes from ritual to a real emotional feeling of, you know, I'm really grateful. Sometimes it's the it's the silliest of things, and sometimes it's the deepest of things. But but you start with your list and you go. Second thing, and this is a little bit more detailed. I want you to write a gratitude letter or make a gratitude visit. Now let me explain what I'm talking about. I think everybody gets the gratitude letter. By the way, that could be an email. That's fine. So a gratitude letter to someone that's, by the way, it's unexpected. Don't tell them you're going to do it. Just do it. Write a gratitude letter or make a gratitude visit. This is amazing. Listen to this. The positive effects of this exercise were researched by a Kent State professor by the name of Steve Tepfer. And here's what he found. His undergrad students who were asked to do this and they participated, experienced enhanced levels of satisfaction and happiness and decreased symptoms of depression. So the straightforward results of this study, you want to increase your happiness and decrease your stress? Be grateful. It's that simple. It's pretty amazing. So I wrote down a couple of things that I think will help you in this. Whether you're going to write it or say it, let me give you be three things, Okay. Number one, if you're going to write it, and I recommend this, if you're going to write it, write it like you're talking to them. Don't try to make this some flowery poem or well-structured mini book. No, just write it like you're going to talk to them. Real, raw, not pretty, just authentic. Second, tell them what they have done for you how it impacted you, and how grateful you are for it. And then finally, short and sweet. If you're going to write it, short and sweet. Don't write a novel. Short and sweet. Just the power of, here's what you did. Here's how it changed my life. I'm so grateful for you. It's fantastic. Now, the other idea is if you don't want to write it, you really want to get the juice out of this because this this is going to sound selfish. It's not. But the impact that people have when they tell someone that they're grateful is they watch, they see the reaction of that person who is so blown away and so blessed. 
and it kind of bounces off of the person you give the gratitude to, and it comes right back at you, and it gives you a huge lift. I'm going to tell you a story how I did this, and this is a gratitude visit, and I think the gratitude visit is 10x more powerful than the gratitude letter. So about 10 years ago, I was heading back to Virginia. I grew up on the coast of Virginia, and I was heading back to see my parents and we, we had scheduled a couple of extra days to spend time with the family. And so I had more time than I normally have. And so I thought to myself, maybe I'll try to see some old buddies from high school, right? Some guys from the basketball team. And then I had the thought, man, I'd love to see Coach Polk, my favorite coach of all time, Coach Benny Polk. He was from Atlanta, Georgia, big, deep Southern accent, and he was as skinny as a rail, and he was super intense. And when I first started playing for Coach Polk, he scared the living crap out of me. By the time I graduated for playing from coach for Coach Polk for three years, I loved him. And so I thought to myself, I'm going to go see Coach Polk. Now, he had since left the high school that I went to, and he's now the athletic director at a big public high school. So I reached out to him. I'd lost touch with him. I got his phone number, left a voicemail. He called me back. I'll never forget it. Hey, Coleman. Never called me by my first name. In fact, he may not even know my first name. He always just called me Coleman. And he said, hey, Coleman. Man, I'd love to see you, man. Come on, stop by. My free period's... I'm like, great, this is great. So I told my wife, I'm going to go see Coach Polk. So I pull up, I walk in, I go to his office, and he's still just as intense as ever. He's like, man, look at you, man, ain't aged today, or something like that. Who knows what he said, something like that. And I said, Coach! We sat down, we did small talk for about five minutes, and then I looked at him, and I said, Coach, I want to tell you something. And I began to tell him all the things that he did for me and how he impacted my life. And how now, to this day, as a best-selling author, national blah, 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 and all that crap that nobody cares about, I said, you had an impact on that. You taught me this, and you taught me this, and you taught me this, and I'm grateful to you. And I just want to tell you, Coach, I love you. The hardest, toughest dude I've ever known looked at me with tears in his eyes, and he couldn't even get out the words, thank you. That is the gratitude visit. And I will tell you that both of us walked away. We walked out the parking lot together, and he garbled out, I love you, and gave me a hug. And that was the most rewarding thing I had experienced in a long, long time. And I dare say Coach felt it as well. So that's the challenge. It's that simple. Do it for somebody in your life. doesn't have to be an old coach, but just do it. And watch the stress melt away. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Thanks for listening to the Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.